Hi, my name is Erica, and today we will be walking through how to implement a general search bar within an app. We all know how useful a search bar can be, no matter if you're on an app or a website. So we're going to walk through how AppWord um, gets it done. So if you look at the screen here, I have a blank text box, and this is what we're going to use to put in our search. So this is a just general search with uh, a width of 170. So this is about the general size we'd want to uh, size it. Now what we're going to do is um, I named it text search already. So it's clear as to uh, what this text box is referring to when you're looking at the object editor or screen editor. Now we're going to set up an icon. So we want this to be clear that it's a search bar. So I'm going to pick an icon. So I'm just going to search. Um, I will use this one here. So we want it right aligned. Uh, I already have a icon margin of three. You can see here if I put in a zero, it's a little too close. So we're going to put um, margin of three and then icon height of 15. Now we're also going to put a placeholder, so I'm going to type in the word search here. And uh, that's done with how you will style it. Now if you go into our scripts, we want to put in code for the on change, which runs after you type something in and hit the enter key or click away. The on clear, which we'll use for when you clear out the, the text. And then lastly, an on icon click. So this will happen whenever we click on this little icon here. So let's start with the on change. So the first thing that we're going to do is include our function. So within this app, we have a list of functions. And we're just trying to call it so we can reference it. Now, before I run any logic, I want to check if our value is not blank. So that's new val. That's the value we will just type in. So the reason why we do this is so that when you clear out the text box, it doesn't run both the on key clear and the on change. It'll only run the, um, when you do an on key clear, it will not run this function. So we want to first run our filter functions. So generally, what these apps or these functions are called is func show and then our record name. So in this case, it's func show templates. And then I have a screen parameter here. So in this case, I want it to be the main screen. So referencing the orphan main screen here. And then after that, sorry. After that, what we want to do is change the icon. So I'm going to write a comment, change the icon. And what we're going to do is we want our icon to turn into a text. So we're going to say me slash icon is the icon for the x, which is f a s f a times. And then we want to make sure the screen updates. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the icon to the client. OK. And then after that, what we want to do is change the back color. So we like to change the search back color to a light green color. So it's very clear as to why our search results are limited. And we can know for sure that we have a search going on. So change back color. We're going to use a user resource color. So my, yeah, my workspace, user resources, and then colors. And then we want the filtered color and then the color property of that. And then again, we're going to send that to the client. OK, 
So that's our on change. So let me just demo what that looks like. So let's say I want to find this report here. I can say applicant. You can see on change, we change the back color, we change the icon, and then we ran the function. Okay, so now what we're going to do is run the on clear. So we want something to happen when you clear out your search. So again, I'm going to include my list of functions within the app. And then the first thing I'm going to do is reset the back color. Okay, so me slash back color is equal to another user resource color. This one we want it to be the default text back color. And then we're going to send that to the client. We're going to now change the icon back to the search, the magnifying glass. This one was goo fill search. And then send to client again that's so that the screen refreshes with the new values and lastly we want to run the filter function again so we can clear out the results and get our full list again that's func show templates and in this case i have the parameters so do that. All right, so then that's done. And you can see here that again, let me type in applicant. Okay, and then if I clear this out, so on the backspace, you can see here it automatically refreshed the list, cleared out my results, and re, uh, changed the back color and changed the icon. Now, lastly, we have the on key clear so that will be, oops, sorry, not on key clear. Uh, we're going to now look at the on icon click. So I'm actually going to copy this because it basically looks like this. But we're just gonna add one thing. Okay, so one thing we're going to do is we're going to check what icon it is first. So if the icon is the X, so FASFA times, then we will do all of this. So again, that makes sure that we're only clearing if we have the X little icon. Was there an error? Okay. Sorry, I forgot to put the then there. Okay, so then lastly, we can click this X button. Oh, I forgot one thing. We have to clear the value. So before we do this, clear the value. Okay, and then we're going to send that to the client. Okay. got an X there. So now that you know how to um, implement logic into this text box, we want to program our searches to our filter function to look at 
the search bar. So I'm going to go into my functions. This is in the report builder app. And I'll go into my show function. OK, so here we have the search. Now I'm aliasing the search, or sorry, saving it to a local variable. Search is the screen's text search value. Now if that search bar is not blank, we're going to do all of this. So the first step that you're going to do is you're going to check if there's an equal sign in there. And I will show what this does after I go through this script. So basically, you can have a really rich search where you type in something equals something, and it'll narrow it down to only that column value of this pane you see here. So checking if there's a search. Now if, or sorry, checking if there's an equal sign. If there is an equal sign, what we're going to do is we're going to extract the search name and the search value. Now the search name is basically the column you want to look at. So report name, for example, and the value is what you actually typed in. So if I put name equals applicant, then applicant is the value. Now we're going to uh, do a, create a where clause for our filter based on what the search name was. So I here I put in a few guesses as to what they would put here. So I put ID or template ID that I know that if they type either one of these in, then I will search the template ID column. So this is just using the create where function, which um, makes this uh, where clause for you. Then this one I have name and report. So these are a possible options that they will use. And then again, I figure out which column to use based on the names here. And then if there is no equal sign, I'm running a very general where clause where you ch I check all of the columns that are on this main pane to check if there are results within those columns. So that is basically just how we do the search. Now once we create our where clause at the very end, when we run our query, we attach the where clause in there. So that's where that gets fed in. Now let me quickly show you what this will look like with the equal sign. So now I put applicant. What I can do is I can say name equals applicant, and that will get me just the name. For example, if I put app equals applicant, I'm not going to get any results because there are no app names that match the word applicant. I can also do um, the creator. Yes, so you can see here that that worked as well. Yeah, that is how you implement a search bar within an app. So you can see here that this is a very rich search bar where you can just type in a general word or you can specify it by the column.